Hey, podcast friends. If you love our podcast and want to help support us to continue making cool shit, consider joining our Patreon community. Get early access to each episode, a monthly hangout on Zoom, custom answers to your questions in exclusive Patreon videos, and much, much more. Head on over to patreon.com slash conversations with creators to become a patron today. Your support means the world to us. Now on to the episode. How did you get into hand shadow artistry? How did like kind of where how did you discover your talent for it? Um, so when I was a kid, we don't have electric power here in the Philippines because before we are a really poor I live with a really poor family and uh, if I'm bored, sometimes I just put the candle and the wall and then do yeah. hand shadows and stuff like we, like we used to when we were kids. So the big question is this. How are creators like us who aren't built for the nine to five, for the people who put their passion before them being comfortable? How do we turn that passion into a living that pays the bills and a life that we love? That is the question. This podcast will give you the answers. My name is Noah Mittman, and welcome to Conversations with Creators. I am your host, Noah Mittman, and I am so excited today to talk to Shadow Ace Philip Gallet. Thanks for being on the show, man. Hi, thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, inviting me here. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you give the people some context on uh, who you are and what you do? All right, so my name, my real name is Filippo Segalit. I am from the Philippines and I am a hand shadow artist. And yes, I'm from America's Got Talent Fantasy League. I'm a finalist there. And maybe you can see my page and my videos everywhere in social media. So that's me. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, I, and I've seen the videos and they're absolutely wild. You have so much talent. How did you... How did you get into hand shadow artistry? How did like kind of where how did you discover your talent for it? Um, so when I was a kid, we don't have electric power here in the Philippines because before we are a really poor I live with a really poor family. And uh, if I'm bored, sometimes I just put the candle and the wall and then do yeah. hand shadows and stuff. Like we like we used to when we were kids. I I hope so, I guess. And uh, uh, there, I started there and I discovered that uh, I can do more complex things yeah. in doing hand shadow art. So uh, I've researched on the internet, on YouTube. I got some tutorials, and but then I got bored because sometimes all of them are like the same. It's about like doing animals and, you know, the basic ones, animals, birds, so I created something maybe different and more level up than that. Yeah. So I think uh, making it really fun because other people uh, said that it was kind of boring doing the hand shadow works kind of boring. And I actually think of a way on how to level it up and how to, you know, make it really fun so everyone can enjoy it. You definitely did. <laughs> you definitely have. <laughs> so... Talk me through your creative process, how you think about crafting a hand shadow performance. Okay, so first, I'm actually just searching for uh, the most trending music. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember when I was a kid, it was in 2011 or 2012, I remember that the Gangnam Style is one of the most, like, the popular. Yeah. The most popular songs of all time like it's really phenomenal like got billion views on youtube and you can hear it everywhere also in the philippines especially here you can hear it everywhere everyone is dancing the gangnam style and uh, i was just wondering if i can do it using my hand shadows so i just try to test it on our house or on our wall and then just you know hear the beat and all and then actually i am not always practicing my yeah. craft so i actually um, uh, consider this just as a hobby of mine <laughs> yeah it was like uh, when i'm bored i'm doing this and this and it was enhanced and practice even i don't know if i'm like practicing it <laughs> it's like it's just natural yeah yeah it's what you do on your, on your free time basically yeah nice <laughs> 
How so? T- talk me through the America's Got Talent uh, experience. How did how wow. did you originally get connected with that, and what was it like? So it is my dream to be on America's Got Talent, and I'm I am a fan of the show. Yeah. I'm always watching the show since I was in high school, I guess. Uh, since I started to you know to uh, have the knowledge to do YouTube's and stuff, I'm a fan of the show. And uh, it was actually a dream come true for me to be there because I'm not expecting to be there. It's just this one TikTok video of mine got viral last 2020. It was the pandemic. Yeah. And like, I actually do shows on different towns here in the Philippines and in different countries. And all of it was were postponed because of, uh, yeah. of the COVID. And so I stayed at home. I just... Uh, uh, download the app, the TikTok app, and I just upload this one video of mine. This is actually uh, one of the most famous songs in the Philippines that time. It's the Powder Power G, or it's about a group uh, whose name is all about butterflies. Yeah. And then I just did the shadows day on the wall. It was 11 p.m. I cannot sleep that night, so <laughs> I recorded a video of it. And when I woke up in the morning, I was really shocked because it got like a million views and my 700 wow. followers got like, it became 100,000 followers. And yeah. because of that video, I continue doing hand shadow art and there are people requesting for like different artists like Michael Jackson, Miley Cyrus and all. And then this one video, this uh, great song from Nelly, if you are familiar with the song. Yeah. It's like just like a rap song and it goes like super viral because it got 100 million views wow. on my TikTok <laughs> and all of them were like tagging AG that they're like at, yeah, at, yeah. at America's Get Talent and then yeah that happened America's Get Talent contacted me in my Instagram account to join AGT wow. and at first I don't believe it but looking at the page it is legit because it's not like the it is a yeah. verified account. And I saw their post, it's legit. And then, okay, let's let's do it. Even if I know what's going to happen. Yeah, and no, then, you just gotta dive in, take the opportunity. Yeah, and then I, uh, I went there. Hey friends, it's your podcast buddy Noah Midman here. And I wanna talk to you a little bit today about one of my passion projects, my clothing brand clothing for creators. Roll the tape. If my life were a movie, the hero's big speech would end with, stop waiting, start creating. Because that's the drive behind my story. Like when I couldn't afford to finish film school. So instead I started my own production company and gave myself a trial by fire YouTube business degree. And it's not just me with these kinds of stories. There is this growing movement of passionate, creative, flow state writing, hustling, persistent creators and entrepreneurs that are taking the internet and the world by storm. Everybody told me I wasn't gonna be able to make any money as an artist. Now, 15 years later, I've worked on three continents. I do own my house, my shop, I'm booked out eight months ahead. I don't subscribe to being a starving artist. Creativity and I are very deep, dark lovers. I've just decided I'm just gonna make stuff. And even if it's not perfect, like, it's getting made. You're gonna think that there's right answers and there's not. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Let's just throw dye on it and it'll look great. You don't need rules some old guy in a suit made up. You don't need anyone telling you that your voice doesn't matter. We are makers, creative types, side hustlers, doers. Why? Because we get shit done. The most important thing every single day is just to get your shit done. Just keep doing it, keep producing, keep creating, and as you do that, you're gonna start becoming the person that you want to be. Don't be scared to try. Commit, you can't half-ass do something. We're full-ass around here. So there's a film you need to make, a company you need to create, a voice you need to share, a product you know the world needs. Put all of yourself into it until anyone who has ever doubted you starts asking you for a job. Then you get to play for a living. You get to create community. Partnerships, collaborations, building bonds with people that like the same stuff you like. You get to live with your heart on your sleeve, a smile on your face, and a solid answer to when anybody asks, why do you do what you do? Sometimes you have to say fuck all the rules to get something that you really need to get out of yourself. You don't need the opinion of the old guy in the suit. You have to give yourself permission to just go. A little less conversation, a little more action. 
clothing for creators. Go check out snowmanfilms.shop today. Hey there, fellow creatives. Conversations with Creators dives deep into the minds of successful filmmakers, artists, musicians, and all-around awesome people. We are looking for some kick-ass sponsors to help us keep this show on the road. If you want to reach a tribe of dedicated listeners who are just as passionate about creating as you are, then look no further. Our audience is full of people who appreciate a good laugh and are always on the lookout for new ways to fuel their creativity. So, Let's team up and create some magic together. We'll work with you to make sure that your brand is showcased in the best light possible. And who knows, maybe we'll even become lifelong friends. Just imagine, years from now, we'll be reminiscing about the good old days when we first teamed up to take the world by storm. Send us an email at noah at snowmanfilms.net to say hey and get the ball rolling. Now back to the episode. I'm actually afraid that first time, because it was my first time in the United States and I'm alone. I'm always performing with my parents as my assistants, but we got like this problem for their like visa and stuff. And then I got mine. So I uh, actually decided to go alone. Maybe I think maybe this is the time that, you know, I will stand up with my own feet and then just go with the journey because it's my dream and it is an opportunity not to be wasted. So yeah, I, uh, I went to EGT. I didn't expect anything at all. I just want to perform. I just want to be seen by the judges. I want to see them, see all of them and how's the experience. And it was really awesome because you know, the, the American, American viewers and followers and fans, they are so warm welcoming me in the, in the USA and then they're they're standing on their feet clapping so and cool. they're actually yeah in our taping they're actually shouting to like to push the golden buzzer yeah kind of thing and I was really overwhelmed so I cried on stage because uh, you know I'm just a I just think that I'm just this guy this little guy <laughs> who is just doing high shadows in the wall and I went to AGT and the world saw my performance. That's correct. So literally from one viral video, you got it on AGT and then was able to sh you were able to show your talent to the world. Yes. Yeah. Well, and listen, like, it's funny too, because you're like, I'm one little guy, but like, you're so good at it. Like it's, you treat, you create worlds with, <laughs> just with shadows. Yeah. It's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> How, so for your for your live performances, mm -hmm. how do you engage with the audience? Um, well, since I was actually very shy, and I'm always I'm always in the back of the board doing hand shadow, just the shadows you can see. But that AGT taught me something that you're an AGT, you're a finalist, you have to be confident. So I I step it up, I perform in front, I do it in the heads of the judges, as you can see, yeah. My, yeah, in the heads of the judges, and then it, become a, it became an idea that when I'm performing live, uh, one main like, uh, way to engage with the audience is to teach them something or to have like, yeah. you know, they wanted to know how, uh, how I did that. So I'm teaching them sometimes in the middle of my show, ask them to stand up and then, you know, do some hand shadow things. Cool. And and put them you wall, yeah. them as you perform, that's wild. Yeah, so that they can see how I'm doing it and it's 100% legit. It's not yeah. scab. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is just my hand. It's just, you know, you don't, <laughs> there's no like, things there's no i mean you, sometimes props but like it's yeah but you're it's creating fun. everything yeah absolutely so what within that when you're teaching the audience what are kind of some favorite techniques or tricks that you like using well since um not all of them have the idea on doing it since here in asia it's our childhood like yeah when you don't have electric power it's like black out in here, we always do that, we're bored. But uh, I actually uh, taught them 
some uh, simple hand shadow tricks like the bird the you know those animals yeah 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 the simple ones and they are actually really really enjoyed it because they were like really shocked but what that's the bird like that's the that's the dog it's really <laughs> simple but you know it's so cute it's so creative and they loved it no, I think it's a universal, uh, you know, communication. It's a universal yeah. sign. So, the bird is one. What are some other? What are a couple other basic ones? Yeah, I mean, like the dog, like this. Like oh, there this, you go. Yeah, the simple, simple ones, and then nice. yeah, dog, and then we have the like the bird. This is another kind of bird, like yes, yeah. on the branch. <laughs> and yeah, some simple like the deer, like this, and doing this. Yeah, this is the uh, yeah with the antlers yeah. and everything. Stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What uh for you? Because I know you've been challenged with kind of creating, and engaging shows. What's some of the most challenging shapes or figures you've had to try to create? Okay, so I think it's the human face because mm. you know the human face has like dimensions. It has a nose, the mouth, and the eyes. Like sometimes it needs to be like blinking or stuff. Yeah. This is the most challenging for me because you really need to, you know, to twist your fingers to, you know, to go into the form. Yeah. And it's not just about the form that you made with your hand, but also the lights and the angles. So it's not just simple. Like if you're doing this, it it will be different if you do it in this way and this way. So you have to uh, know your angle. Yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. And also the distance to the light. So if you go, you know, closer, you go bigger, and then if you go farther, you go like smaller. So. That's wild too. And uh, do you do any where one hand is closer to the light than the other hand to kind of create like that illusion? Yeah, I I always do it because there's are like figures that needed to be on that uh, distance or in that angle, especially, or I, I'll give you an example, like the, the angel. Yeah. So the wings should be like, it should be like bigger. Right. So I have to close like the, the right hand to the, to the light to make it like an illusion. It's bigger. And then it's, it's the, the face that is smaller. Yeah. Yeah. That, that takes a lot of practice. I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's wild. Um, so a couple, moving on to kind of some uh, some personal uh, quick fire questions. Mm -hmm. uh, what's one of your favorite quotes and why? My favorite quote. I actually have a quote. So it's dreams begin in the dark. And that, yeah, that that's my sense. favorite. <laughs> it's actually uh, you know you can really get it. If I said that, because you know, my dreams started from darkness and found the light, you know, to yeah. perform and to be more creative and you know, to share my story to the world. I love that. So, are you, uh, is this more of a full time thing for you now? Are you doing shows a lot or kind of is, are you able to make a living with it? Oh, uh, yeah, it is actually a full thing now for me. So, I uploaded, I uploaded some videos on my account. I always upload some, you know, some videos, some short videos, and sometimes there are like clients uh, messaging me. They yeah. need me to make some, you know, to make some videos for their songs, for their promos, and for some commercials. Yeah. And yeah, I also do. I perform live, so I just uh, got home. I went to, to Vegas for the AGT Superstars. Nice. So I've been there for one month. I performed yeah. there for a month. And it was an amazing experience because I never thought in my life that I'll be in Vegas. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, where did uh, the original AGT uh, performance, where was that? Uh, the Superstars is on Luxor Hotel. And Casino okay. In Las Vegas. Yeah, Vegas, gotcha. Um, so for, for the, uh, the live show, actually, yeah, what, so you said musical artists have reached out to you for like doing their songs? Yes. Um, not them directly, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, there are some representatives 
Like I did so a song from Megan Trainer for the Black Eyed Peas. Nice. And also an account from from Jason Derulo contacted me because uh he really loves that one video of mine doing uh Nicki Minaj and he put it on his YouTube account and shorts and Wow, that's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> What uh what commercials have you have you been able to do? Well, I've I've done some commercial from Popeyes, but I don't know where they you know they aired it. But I yeah. know it's online, so it's a hand shadow video tutorial of how to cook the Popeyes <laughs> famous fried chicken. Like, but in a in a hand shadow way. So like I need to go hunt that hat. down. I need to go find that. <laughs> yeah, we have some little chef hat. And then the little shadows doing the some kind of thing. You can find it online, I guess. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> if you were to uh, uh, sum up your your career with a title, what would you call it? Title of my career. It's like your memoir. Your uh, if you were to write a book about your life, what would you call it? I think it's it's. I don't know, maybe, maybe unexpected. Yeah, some kind of thing. Like I that. like, I like the the starting in the dark, going in the light. I think that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that one too. Absolutely. <laughs> and then, obviously, this started as a hobby, but now that it's your job, do you have any other yeah. hobbies that you kind of relax with? Um. Well, uh, since the the pandemic when the when pandemic happened. Uh, I already said that you know our shows got canceled yeah. and stuff like that. So I opened like a, a small business here in the Philippines. It's it's a cake business. So we bake cakes and we decorate cakes. So since I have a passion in arts and crafts, like I really love painting, like uh, you know decorating like cakes making it really, really fun, really cool. Yeah. And uh, we uh, actually opened that business in pandemic and we, but unfortunately we stopped because uh, I have, don't have a lot of time now yeah. to do it with my, with my job. Like That's good artist. though. That's a good thing. You did, yeah. you're, you're, the, the true passion is uh, taken off for you. Yeah. But, you know, in pandemic, it, it really helps us. It really helps yeah. us a lot. The baking and the decorating. Absolutely, yeah. Yes. That's, that's of fantastic. Yeah. You're just, everything is art. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have, okay, so uh, actually this is perfect. So what, uh, kind of roll out the red carpet for you. Do you have any shows coming up uh, that people can know about? Kind of let people know what you got going on in your life. Well, I'm still on my accounts. I do lives on TikTok. Yeah. Uh, every other day, every other night, if it's okay to go live, because sometimes I got like banned and restricted. I don't know yeah. why. <laughs> and so, uh, I have uh, I have a show, but I think I cannot tell it yet. Okay. But because it's actually really confidential, but you'll know it soon, and it will happen this July. So I'm pre I'm just uh, preparing my documents and my papers. Go That's on. awesome. <laughs> yeah. He has a he has a NDA protected project yeah. coming out in July and that <laughs> exactly. is super exciting. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, I definitely will be uh, keeping an eye out for that. And uh, you, it, you just, if, if anybody hasn't seen uh, what Philip can do, it is freaking, you got to go watch it. Cause it's, it's so entertaining. <laughs> well thank you so much man for being on the show i appreciate uh, thank you the so time. much for inviting me yeah uh, no it's awesome uh yeah I, I look watch out for him in july and uh and thanks for your time man all right thank you so much <laughs> all right for everybody watching and listening i will see you next time <laughs>